greet you in the name of the Lord on this most holy evening. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. Tonight, we celebrate again the birth of the Christ. We listen again to sacred stories and songs and remind ourselves of this um, amazing, beautiful story that we are now a part of as believers and as followers of the Christ. I invite you to hear these words, a bidding prayer from the United Methodist Church. Beloved in Christ, this Christmas Eve, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our sin until the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols and our praise. But first, because this of all things would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people, for peace upon this earth he came to save, for love and unity within the one church he did build, for goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, the multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we are evermore, we are one. I am so glad that we are one, even though we are physically apart from each other. Let us turn now to the story of Christmas and rejoice again in our hearts and lives as we open ourselves up to the power and the presence of this miracle of Jesus' birth.
Christmas affirmation. Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us that we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set flame to this Advent affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled. Our love is consummated, our joy is complete, and our peace is sealed. Rejoice, a Savior is born. A Savior is born indeed, joy to the world. I'm Pam Gruber, reading from the Common English Bible, the story of Jesus' birth, from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant.
and continuing in chapter 2 of Luke, verses 6 and 7. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the guest room. I'm Anita Gardner Farrell. I'm reading Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born, this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Thank you. 
I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Translation, Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A reading from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 11. From the Common English Bible, this is the coming of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them 
the time when the star had first appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So tonight is a holy night, and we celebrate again and remember our sacred stories. We've read again from the scripture, we've sung our songs that tell the stories of angels and shepherds and wise men, we've talked about among ourselves the ways in which God is at work among us. We all have these traditions that speak to us powerfully if we allow them to do that. When I was a little girl, my grandmother used to have us all gather at her house on Christmas Eve. And we would gather there, and before we could open any gifts, my grandmother sat down in her big armchair with her Bible on her lap, and then she began to read the Christmas story from Luke. 
And she would read it to us, and then only then, after a prayer, could we begin to open the gifts under the tree, and the cousins would all get together and play with all our new toys and games. When my grandmother went on to be with God in heaven, my father started that same tradition at his house. And so we would go there on Christmas Eve, and now Dad was the one who read the story from Luke. And um, so I can still hear both those voices when I hear the scriptures, my grandmother's and my dad's. After Dad died um, and we went to my house, um, I also read the Christmas story. And I did that for um, a couple of years. And then, you know, it was time to rotate, and we went to someone else's house for Christmas, another of the relatives. And, of course, they were in charge then of the celebration, and no one read the Christmas story. And when I came home, I remember being disappointed enough that I had to pull out the Bible and read it aloud to myself because it mattered so much to me that I hear this story and hear it aloud on Christmas Eve. I think there are some times that we just need to let the scripture speak and tell us again its story and remind us again of the faith and the truth in which we stand. I don't see a need to explain it away or to explain it in um, lofty terms. It is the story, the story of God come to earth, of a young woman, um, a woman who um, maybe already had thought she had her life planned out for her, but now in the presence and power of God, she said a holy yes to something brand new. And so then this man to whom she is engaged, he also, I imagine, just a normal person, had his life planned out, but also a holy yes to God. And because they said yes, and because the shepherds in the field believed the angels when they heard a story and came to see what had happened, because wise men in a country far away knew that something amazing was happening when they saw heavenly bodies that were different than what they had seen before, and followed a star and came to worship this small and new baby who was the, the son of the Most High God. This is an amazing story. But it's a story of people just like us who were engaged in their regular lives. And so God spoke to them, God called them, God gave them the opportunity to listen, to obey, and to worship. I invite you tonight to do those same things. Worship the Christ child. Remember that you have been called by name and loved by God and that you have the opportunity again just as the people who walked in darkness saw great light, to be the light to all those you meet as you share this sacred story. May God bless you tonight and always. I keep you all in my heart. Amen.
if we were here together in the sanctuary, I would take a light from the Christ candle and I would pass it on and symbolically we would go down the rows spreading the love and the light of Christ to all. I invite you to do that now wherever you are, to remember that the light has come into the world and to share that spirit and that joy as we sing together Silent Night. May the Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in peace and joy. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.